Back in 2016, when Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court Chief Justice Ralph Gantz observed that African Americans were imprisoned six times more than whites, he asked Harvard researchers to find out why. In this video, I will share 15 facts accumulated from this study focused on Massachusetts. Yes, yes, y'all. My name is Romani Malco. I am the founder of The Pep, the People's Empowerment Platform, and you are watching another episode of Citing Resources. Today, we are going to explore the research process, credibility, proof of credibility, and accompanying data that led Harvard researchers to their conclusion as to why African Americans are incarcerated at a rate of six times more than whites in the state of Massachusetts. These are hard truths that you do not want to miss. Using regression analysis factors such as the defense criminal history and demographics, initial charge severity, court jurisdiction, and neighborhood characteristics. Here's a brief breakdown of what these guys came up with. For the first on our list at number 15, we will take a look at the statistics that prompted Gantz to ask Harvard researchers to, and I quote, take a hard look at how we can better fulfill our promise to deliver equal justice to every litigant. In Massachusetts, 655 of every 100,000 black people are incarcerated. While there are only 82 whites for that exact number. Now, this is according to data provided by the Massachusetts Sentencing Commission. Wait, wait, wait. Let's make this a little bit easier to comprehend. While one in 10 white Massachusetts, Massachusetts? What, what do you call people from Massachusetts? Well, look, while one in 10 whites were being incarcerated in 2016, six out of 10 blacks were being incarcerated in that same year. And moving forward, whether you agree with this information or not, Harvard researchers have provided a lot of hard data to explain why. And let's take a look at a few of them here at number 14, but what do you think? Could it be that African Americans committed more crimes? No, they didn't. Maybe they have more African Americans living in Massachusetts. Still a big no and very silly if you thought so. The study examined the Massachusetts criminal process from charging to the racial disparities evident in sentencing. They used data provided by the trial court records of their case management system, court activity records known as CARI, records from the Department of Criminal Justice Information Services, American Community Survey, 2015 five-year data profile, legal and administrative consultants for Massachusetts Code, and Massachusetts Sentencing Commission publications. The research unearthed disturbing occurrences typically depicted in movies, some of which you will find hard to swallow and that is cops are more likely to stop black drivers. Police are more likely to search for or are more interested in investigating black residents. The FBI is likely to charge black suspects with infractions that carry worse penalties. Prosecutors are less likely to listen to black suspects plea bargains or any pre-trial interventions. Judges sentence African Americans to rot longer in prison. These are both facts and truths but wait a minute there might be a clear explanation for this. That is that African Americans are more prone to commit worse crimes than whites, which takes us into number 13. If you assume that in 2016 in the state of Massachusetts, blacks committed worse crimes than whites, you are 100% wrong. Black people do not commit worse crimes than their white counterparts. Actually, it's the other way around. The study revealed that the average white felon committed a more severe crime than the average black felon. And somehow, a large percentage of African Americans end up with longer sentences, 168 days longer to be exact. Now hold your hat because at number 12 it gets really interesting. Just know that black people are less likely than whites to have their cases resolved through less severe dispositions. For instance, probation before trial or continuances without findings. This is exactly what it says. There is no attempt at sensationalizing here. There is no need to feed propaganda. And here's what's scary. We haven't even scratched the surface yet. We're still taking it out of the plastic. At number 11, after this research team had reviewed over a million cases, they didn't just find that African Americans face longer prison sentences, they also found that African Americans face harsher verdicts. It's not just that they spend more time in prison, it's that their time in prison is often worse than it should be. In the case of parole, the conditions can be somewhat extreme. The sentences aren't just simply harsher, but they end with less favorable outcomes than that of whites. And just so you know the link to my article and the original Time Magazine article with the cited data can be found in the description. Let's get into number 10. Blacks make up 24% of the Boston population. Relatively speaking, a minority group that somehow ended up becoming the major group at 63% for being stopped by cops, searched and interrogated between the years of 2007 and 2010. Now, we could just jump to several conclusions and assume that all police officers think that African Americans are all criminals just waiting to go to jail and they are a major contributor to hastening the process, but let's not do that. Let us stick to the data. 
Before moving further into this video, I'd like to ask a question that I hope you can answer in the comments. Do you believe there is racial disparity within our judicial system? There's a lot of data out there, a lot of conflicting data, and I'm just curious to know what the general consensus is. Number nine, the study reveals that black suspects, not convicts, black suspects don't easily get bailed. Even with the established data that states white felons commit more severe crimes than that of black felons, records amassed from the research shows that there is a higher volume of African Americans detained without bail when you compare the figures to that of white defendants. At number eight, even when black people are granted bail, the bail is set slightly higher than that of white defendants. I'm thinking out loud here, but I'm wondering if this is because of the fact that blacks are slightly more unable to pay bail while on trial than that of white defendants. But no, that doesn't make sense because the it's no reason to still not grant bail. But as a result, blacks are more often detained for the duration of their case. But it gets deeper than that. How deep? Well, at number seven, law enforcement agents go as far as charging African-Americans with higher offenses. The statistics collected from the data denote exactly this. So for example, if a black male is convicted of assault, he'd face a minimum of six months of jail time, whereas a white male convicted of the same crime would get four to five months tops. The study also illustrated how white Americans with more serious initial charges end up serving less time in jail than that of black Americans with less serious initial charges. At number six, to make this possible, prosecutors are more likely to send blacks to superior courts, where sentences are mostly longer as a superior court exercises exclusive jurisdiction. A reason for this could be that prosecutors expect difficulty in convicting black defendants and offer larger charge discount rates during the plea bargaining process in order to obtain similar conviction rates. However, know that this interpretation is inconsistent with similar research done in other studies that black defendants are more likely to be convicted in jury trials compared to blacks. Is this against the law? Well, if you get away with refusing to grant bail to a suspect who meets the requirements, you obviously have license to make things as bad for the suspect as you desire. The law enforcement agencies play their part and the justice system simply complements them. So rather than breaking up the inertia, these guys just roll with it. They let it roll like a nicely oiled machine. But it doesn't end at shipping black people to a superior court to receive longer sentences. At number five, when it comes to drug and weapon offenses, blacks and Latinx not only receive longer prison sentences, but are more likely to be incarcerated in the first place compared to whites. Also, despite the severity of the crime and what the report tagged as additional factors in all drug and weapon offenses, the statistic did not waver. The differences in punishment for OUI operating under the influence and weapons offenses in Massachusetts thus has the potential to reflect large racial disparities that do not reflect difference in risk to public safety. However, despite black defendants making up only 16.4% of firearm cases in 2012, close to 46% of firearm offenders were black. And in 70.3% of those instances, all the individual did was get popped for carrying an unlicensed weapon. At number four, we have more astonishing facts on criminal charges. Additionally, blacks are more likely to be jailed and receive longer incarceration sentences when charged with offenses that carry mandatory minimum sentences compared to their white counterparts. Think about the part where blacks receive longer prison sentences. It doesn't start when blacks are convicted. It starts during the pretrial. So this leads me to number three on our list, uh, where in which the study found a number of reasons for why Blacks and Latinx are more likely to be detained than whites for the duration of their case. The study previews the 2013 Massachusetts sentencing practices, revealing that 79.8% of operating under the influence cases were resolved without prosecuting the defendants. And probation was the most common disposition. Taking our number two spot, the report showed that white people made up 82.2% of the people convicted for operating under the influence offenses. Carrying an unlicensed firearm and drunk driving are considered to have equal danger effects, yet blacks face more convictions and whites get away with it. This is because they constitute the 77% of the people who are not convicted after admitting to operating under the influence. Just to oversimplify it, more white people are charged with OUI offenses, but a huge percentage of them actually get away with it as opposed to their black counterparts. If you are finding this content valuable, now would be a good time to hit the subscription button and that notification bell. And if you really want to get access to all of the content that I create, 
do me a favor and request an invite at peprequest.com. That's peprequest.com. Now, what about when blacks manage to escape conviction? I mean, you would think that would be better for black folks, right? Mm. Sorry. Finally, at number one, black people are more likely to receive shorter probation sentences. In fact, to take it one step further, black people are less likely to receive probation at all. <laughs> And just to be clear, I'm not making this video to sing Kumbaya. I'm not here to complain about being a victim, despite having horrible experiences with law enforcement myself. Though few and far between, I've actually had a few pleasant experiences with police officers as well. What this video helped crystallize to me is just how systemic, regardless of what tier you are on in law enforcement and our judiciary, that racial disparities exist and how they are executed. There's also affinity bias where people are just more likely to empathize with people who reflect their own likeness. As a minority in almost any community where the majority of people in authoritative positions do not reflect your likeness, your likelihood of receiving the benefit of the doubt is somewhat compromised. In fact, severely compromised in most instances, at least in the United States of America. And understanding that affinity bias and all the opportunities there are for racial disparities from the point in which a suspect is detained all the way up to his conviction should give you a better idea of what you're actually dealing with. And yet, Yes, we are also contending with the fact that white supremacists have infiltrated law enforcement to use it as a means of furthering white supremacist agendas. You can learn more about that in this video that's in one of these corners right here. But let's just be real. Our constitution, political system, and judicial system were not designed to accommodate diversity. I don't care where you go in the world, affinity bias exists in most civilizations. The difference in what we're dealing with is that it is systemic. And the quicker you accept that living in the USA means that you live in a country where the only ways in which you can trump that affinity bias is by being able to maintain economic power, political power, judicial power. If you can attain those things or any of those things, you have a better chance at trumping the racist. And that requires being educated on the inner workings of your local municipality. That's what we got to make sexy. And you can learn more about that by watching a video that's somewhere over my head in which I interview Nalini Stamp. She's a political activist. You will learn a hell of a lot watching that video. But what is your opinion? Do you truthfully believe that someday in the United States of America, our judiciary will regard all people equally? What do y'all think? Do you have any suggestions on how to deal with racial disparities and affinity bias within our judicial system? Please let me know in the comments. You won't just be educating me, you'll be educating other people who watch this video. If you are feeling this content, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. You can also request an invite to peprequest.com. My name is Romany Malco. I am the founder of the PEP, the People's Empowerment Platform, and this concludes another episode of Citing Resources. Deuces.